My name is Simeon Quarry. I'm a photographer and a cinematographer, the proud owner of a business called Vivida. We are a storytelling agency um, that focuses on helping to tell stories now for some of the, the biggest brands in the world. Um, you are with us right now on location, so if you hear some unusual background noise, uh, just know that we are right now, we're in the thick of it. But I wanted to spend some time hanging out with you, um, explaining to you some of the kit that I use. Um, uh, this particular episode has been brought to you by uh, Manfrotto um, and also um, Calumet as well. Um, Calumet are a great source of photographic and also video equipment for purchase as well as for, for rental. Um, I'm going to dig in a little bit to um, my background um, over, the, over the years. Um, some of you may have come across myself um, as a wedding photographer and a wedding cinematographer. I started off as an individual, a, a one-man band, and then over the years that, that's grown so that we have a, a team now that as we've moved from weddings and we no longer shoot weddings and we now shoot um, for corporates, um, we have project management, we have those involved in, in marketing, um, still specialisms involved in the actual capturing and recording of media, and, and the team grows when we need to for very large productions as well. When we were shooting weddings, we were focused still heavily on storytelling. Um, our tagline was always associated with the importance of telling stories, which meant that the equipment that we used was important, but it was what was happening in there that was the most important thing. Uh, and if you were to look at the photography, we would always try and bring to the top or to the forefront of an image or of the video the story or the narrative that was always based on the client that we were working with. And now that we work with corporates and corporations and businesses as an agency, we have exactly that same focus and exactly the same ethos. But in order to be able to capture, to be able to document a story in the way that it deserves, we have to have right equipment and we have to have what we need to be able to bring that story to life. Often, quite correctly, we are focusing on the cameras that we're using. For me, I'm a Canon ambassador um, and a proud user of Canon cameras and equipment ranging from what, a 1DC, a 1DX Mark II, you're doing behind the camera, you're shooting with the C300 Mark II. Um, and it's only right that we focus on this type of equipment because of course, our, what we record and is documented comes from one of these babies and the lenses that we've got. But the key thing that we always have to focus on is what it is that we use to support our equipment and also transport our equipment and also light the story as well. Does that make sense? Um, so if it's okay, I'd love to just take you around some of the, some of the equipment that we use and some of the equipment that we, we have in the Vivida kit bag. I'll start off firstly with uh, some key important things. Um, Naturally, bags can be something that's, that's very key to transporting your kit and equipment. Manfrotto have got a plethora of uh, different bags that can be used. Um, I use um, the rucksack at times. I use roller bags, but these can be really good. And um, when I went to India, um, this was always stuck to my back with very quick access to um, key photographic equipment. Uh, I was able to fit in this rucksack, I was able to fit um, my camera, my lenses, um, and also my strobe lighting. I had a Profoto B2 pack that fit exactly in this, in this pocket. Um, these bags are great because they're comfortable, got really good padding on them as well. So there are some times when you, you are working in environments in countries where there's a lot of kind of wheel, there's a lot of dirt on the floor and a roller bag is not ideal because you're just constantly fighting you know, pulling that bag along, particularly when you've got weights and cameras and lenses, etc., in the bag. So bags where you are able to kind of lift all of your kit off the ground is ideal. Also, if you work in environments where it's extremely wet, sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm shooting with a camera um, and I'm moving through maybe a foot or two of water. I don't want to have a roller bag for the obvious reasons, right? You don't want to get your equipment wet. So having your equipment off the ground makes a lot of sense. Perhaps if you're shooting as a one solo shooter in an environment, can you imagine having a roller bag? Um, and then I, I know some scenes I've been shooting in the middle of India or in the middle of villages in Africa. 
um, and I've got my camera there, but if I had a roller bag, all of the equipment would be there on the floor. And of course you're shooting, but what you're actually concentrating on as you're shooting is you're thinking more about whether someone's gonna run along and steal your roller bag rather than the shot that's in front of you. So in those scenarios, um, a really good rucksack is ideal. Um, and I tend to choose my bags dependent on the shoot. So um, I choose any equipment as a tool based on what it is that I'm shooting. So this is great. We travel with so many large items and objects that the Manfrotto high roller that you see here on the floor um, is ideal um, for traveling um, I've got a van today. The van was stacked up high with lots and lots of equipment. And I've got tripods and I've got stands. They fit within this bag. Uh, when I'm flying, this baby comes with me when I'm, when I'm flying out of location. Um, I've got a suitcase which might have clothes in it. Then I've got this baby that's got my tripods, my stands and my sliders all contained within. This is battered and bruised because it's been literally all over the world from Africa to India to the US and um, it's traveled everywhere with me um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take out of this bag probably the thing that when you think about the brand Manfrotto it comes first to mind and that is the tripod. These are very, very useful um, for both photography and for video. Um, I have here um, a tripod. I have, there's so many different tripods with so many different names. I'll read it straight off the side. It's a 535AQ Manfrotto. Please feel free to put text over this if I've got it wrong. Um, and that's also with a 502 head. I'm going to drop these down just so you see why I like this particular uh, tripod. Now, they come in different weights. So... You know, if you want something that's lightweight, like a carbon fiber, that there are those options. If you want something that's a, a little bit heavier, like I tend to, um, I take that option as well. Sometimes in windy environments, lightweight is not always the way you want to go. Lightweight's really important if you're going to be traveling, walking with it, uh, with a camera and, and your load and your tripod. But there are times when the biggest consideration is keeping your equipment as steady as possible particularly when if you're working with a, a big baby like the C300 Mark II that you're shooting on right now. Um, I'm, I'm, I've got here a, a video head. Um, this video head is ideal because, of course, the key thing when it comes to video, which is different to photography, is it's all about the movement of the camera. So for me, um, the rotation is absolutely key uh, and the fluid nature of this particular tripod head is, is important to me. Uh, and, and all of these things, uh, all these settings on the side are things that you can kind of play around with. So if the load in the camera is very, very heavy, all I need to do is I can increase the tension so that then if I've got a camera with a long lens for photo or for video, it balances out and, and, it, and it doesn't give and start to tip. There's nothing that gives you more panic than having a heavy camera on a tripod and all of a sudden you walk away from it and the camera just starts to tip down. You know that feeling. Um, so a fluid head for me with video becomes very, very important. And because it's also a ball head, um, what it means is, I don't know if you can see that, Jordan, but if I was to kind of loosen, oh man, who's done this up? It's definitely, Jordan, you've definitely done that. Oh, all right. If I loosen this, if the camera is off center, I can use the spirit level that's here and I can get that into the correct position there we go. And then I can lock it off. So it's a very, very quick way of making sure that the camera is level um, and stable. And as you rotate and pan, that angle is staying the same throughout your shot and throughout your transition. Um, this particular tripod is awesome because of the height that it's able to go to. Uh, we did a, tr a, a time lapse, um, myself and Team Vivida where we needed to have the camera very, very high up with an exceptionally wide lens. So I was able to use this tripod to get the camera up high enough, higher than my head, and keep myself out of the frame. On an 11 to 24 mil lens, which is what I was shooting with, it would be very, very easy to get myself in the frame. And that, of course, 
would be a massive issue. So having a tripod that was extremely high like this one, well, that's great, because now my, my camera was way above my head um, and we were operating it from a really nice height and able to still have control of everything that we needed to get control of. But you saw how small this collapsed down to and then how big and how high it goes. Uh, so that's massively beneficial. But there are those times, um, I'll bring this down just so you can see it in the same shot. Um, there are those times when you don't want to shoot with a, a video head, primarily because you're, you're shooting photography. The aims with photography are a little bit different. Um, you are focusing with photography, sometimes more on precision um, and the angle of movement, or not movement, the angle of the camera. Um, and also you're trying to keep that camera absolutely fixed in position. So I've got um, a couple of heads that do a great job on that. So let me just show you what we've got on the bench. I'm gonna take this off. There we go. And off she comes. Just so you know, um, if ever I need to travel with a tripod like this and I don't have my big Manfrotto bag with me or I need to fit it inside a tripod and um, fit it inside a suitcase, I take the head off, pack the head separately, collapse the legs down, then you don't have the same um, length or what you might be struggling with, you may be struggling with weight. Um, so you need to, you could separate the head and separate it from the legs. And in that way, you're splitting the weight across maybe more than one bag or more than one suitcase. I'm gonna change the head out. So I'm gonna put this up here. I'm gonna to move to uh, my photographic ball head and I'm looking for the name, an MHX Pro BHQ6. Manfrotto, I absolutely love the names of your products. Um, they work great. Um, naming, get me involved, please. Um, I'm gonna put this on. Now, I've got this on a ball head, just like I had our video head, but you can see the size is very, very different. And that's because this needs to um, really control the fluid motion of the camera. This just needs to keep it still and locked into position. There we go, you're safe. So with this here, I've got very, very fine increments here, um, which I can use if I find a, let's say I find um, a particular position and I need to come back to it later on. There's markings down here and measurements, which I can use to kind of make sure that I can keep coming back to the same position. So those measurements can be extremely useful. Um, the other thing here that is great is I can go from portrait yeah, uh, to landscape. So if you can imagine that this camera, I should have just mounted it on. Um, now that is landscape, but if you want to go portrait, I can simply move that into position. So you get those times when you you know, you want the stability. You maybe you want to shoot with um, a low shutter speed tripod every time. Um, really helps. But if you are operating a really, you know, a quite a heavy camera or a valuable camera, or you want to have the flexibility of working with um, a light lens, but also a very long, heavy lens that's very front heavy, this locks into position like so. And and will not move. Um, so this was really used for us. I'm trying to think of practical applications where we use this. Again, we had a tripod. Um, we used this tripod with this head. In fact, we had two of them for a time match project where we were shooting with a motion control slider. So we had um, a two meter slider, and we needed to run um, the slider over the course of a couple of hours uh, and these heads provided us with the flexibility um, that we needed in terms of getting the angle of the slider but then there were those other scenes where we were working with extremely long lenses and this simply provided us with the strength and resistance that was required in order to be able to maintain the weight of an exceptionally heavy lens um, so thumbs up uh, liking that and also appreciating how the one tripod is helping me out as I use more than one head. I'm also very lucky, very lucky to have this baby. 
Um, this is a professional kind of photo and video head. There are sometimes those times when I don't want to travel with two heads, all right? So I travel with one, all right? Sorry, Jordan, focusing, all right? So instead of having the two, I travel with this one instead. And this is um, a little bit of a hybrid um, because what this has is it has all the precision of this here. And I would say in some ways it has even more because um, you're, I'm going to come close to the camera just so you can focus on it a bit. Let me know if you've got that. Um, you've got all of these measurements all around. So all of these measurements um, can be very, very useful if you need to get a camera into a very, very particular position uh, and you need to be working millimetre by millimetre. This is going to provide you with visual aid to help you be able to do that for photography. You may not be able to see the switch here, but there's a switch that takes this particular tripod head from photo mode to video mode. Uh, and then when you engage that, then all of a sudden the nature of the, tri of the head changes to then start to work with fluid motion or, or, or actually not work with fluid motion, but lock it off. Uh, so a very versatile head, a little bit more expensive, but if you were looking at having to spend money on both a video head and a photo head, perhaps this could be a really good option. Next, I want to speak to you about something that really excites me. Um, it is a light stand. Now, when I say light stand, you kind of think, right, that's not very interesting. But for me, uh, it is something that's very key and important. Um, I remember I was working with very, very cheap light stands and a member of um, Team Vida was Cornell and he was like, man, your, your, your light stands are rubbish. And it's because you have expensive lights. Um, the Manfrotto lights are reasonable in price, but some of the lights that we have are very expensive and some of the lights we rent are very, very expensive. And you don't want to put expensive things on cheap things. So the light stands from Manfrotto are awesome. Notice that this particular bag fits in the light stands, which is rare. Um, and what makes these light stands even more awesome is they clip together. I have three of these, right? So I have three, um, but there's no limit to how many you can own, naturally. But do you notice how they stack together, right? That is what makes these awesome. And this is the 104, no, 1004 BAC. 1004 BAC Manfrotto light stands, okay? Um, I'm gonna put them down. When you stack them together, the awesome thing is they stand up uh, and when you are transporting light stands, sometimes you know what it's like, right? You light stand under here, light stand under here, and you're walking along carrying them all and they, you start dropping them and it's a nightmare. I've been there, but I didn't want to be there any longer. So these light stands were awesome. Um, and, and these are probably, for me, one of the most exciting things that Manfrotto produces. That's just a personal thing because how much these light stands change things for, for myself and the team. Um, you've got a little button here on the top. Oh, I'm going to hold these. Jordan, come take a close up. Um, these release the light stands. Yeah. So these make the kind of enable you to release them. I'm going to put them on, floor, on the floor for my own safety as I do release them. There we go. So I've just pressed the button and release. And then to put them in, it's as simple as that. They just snap into place, release, snap into place. Oh, tell me you don't like that, right? Um, I'm going to take one light stand for the time being. Leave these two standing over here on an uneven floor. Not the best idea, but just to prove a point, they're still standing. Um, and I'm going to open up this baby and we're going to see how high she goes. Tighten, nice and quick, and down. First thing you'll notice is the spread of this light stand. The feet here um, are great with the amount that they, that they spread. Um, so that's really cool because you know once light stands spread out wide like that, you know that you've got the ability to take them up very, very high. Um, Jordan, because this light stand is so tall, I'm gonna walk down the back um, feel free to stay as you are um, and I'm going to try and find a space to illustrate 
how tall these are. Can you see me through here, Jordan? Awesome. Okay. Whenever you work with a light stand, this is key, this is important. I'm coming to you, back to you, all right? Whenever you work with a light stand, make sure that you start with the top first, okay? This will become very, very apparent shortly. Okay, I'm walking away. Okay. Okay, there we go. Up. And then up. How impressive is that for a light stand, all right? Um, height, you've got a light on there, and this is still steady and stable, even without having a sandbag on it, even though I'd recommend it. But if I'm honest with you, this is not the full extended height. Are you ready? That is high. Uh, from memory, I think it's 12 foot. Uh, I may stand to be corrected, but uh, from memory, this is about 12 foot. Uh, that is really high. So you imagine I'm flying out on location with three light stands clipped together in my Manfrotto large high roller bag, high roller bag, and then on location with um, a light from Manfrotto or my own, you know, another brand um, of maybe strobe light like Pro Photo or a Canon speed light. I'm getting my lights that high up. That's really cool. Um, not cool, it's exceptionally useful. Uh, so, oh my gosh, I could be all here, here all day just thinking about that. Uh, so definitely have a think about your light stands. Something else I wanna point out to you. Um, Jordan, I'm gonna move this microphone quite close to this light stand and I want you all to listen as I drop down this light stand and I'm gonna pull down on this light stand with all my weight to simulate um, the kind of weight of a very heavy light. I think you'll pick it up anyway, Jordan. Ready? I'm going to loosen this. I'm going to loosen this. Next one. Now, what you may be able to discern there, if this microphone was loud, loud enough and close enough, was the kind of now, that is air cushioning. When you've got a really heavy light and a light that's up that high, the last thing you want to do is loosen it and all of a sudden, the light comes down and then what you have to do at the end, you have to grab hold of it and hope that it doesn't pinch your fingers on the way down. And you have to hope that your expensive light, if it has a light bulb, you know, a light bulb within it or LEDs or whatever, you hope that it doesn't damage the light as it hits and bangs on the bottom level um, of a, de a decompressed stand. So what we have here is they've got like air cushioning in here. There's an amount of air that's within these particular um, uh, light stand poles or you know, these elements here. And as you pull down, it protects your equipment because it doesn't allow it to fall down at full speed. It, it kind of gracefully brings my equipment down to ground level. That is important and also uh, saves me money because I have had to repair equipment before um, because sometimes you're shooting not by yourself for me I've got a team and sometimes we're bringing in grips or other people to join the team who have various levels of experience um, and they can make mistakes if I can have equipment that does as much work as possible makes things as safe as possible makes things as easy as possible it makes things better for me and easier for me to carry on concentrating on the job that's most important to me, which is telling the story. I've picked up my mobile phone now. Um, uh, it's because I've linked these Lycos Manfrotto light panels directly to my mobile phone using Bluetooth. And with my mobile, I can now control um, the white balance of my two lights, daylight and also tungsten, because these are bicolor but I can also control the intensity of the light. I'm gonna go a bit overexposed, excuse me, don't change the exposure on the camera, but just to highlight and show a point, right? And that is very, very useful, right? And um, these lights are great because they are very lightweight, hence probably the name, why they called them light panels, um, as well as being light, because it's light that's coming out of them. Um, 
but the ability to change the light color on the basis of the environment that you're in or based on the creativity that you kind of you want to work with you might want to start to mix lights and light objects and um, you can do that um, it could be that these lights are up on a light stand like you see over here and because the light is so high you know, a second ago we essentially showed how high that light stand reaches into the air you imagine having a light that's 12 foot up in the air and you go you know something i need to get that light a bit brighter or you perhaps say, um, actually, I need to change the white balance of that light from tungsten to daylight. So what you do is you then go up to the light stand and then you start to bring it back down again and then you make the adjustment, you take it up again and because you've miscalculated how bright the light is um, because you've not calculated the distance, you, you, you're then now not as bright as you thought, you've got to turn it up again. So you then bring it back down again and you change it and so on and so forth. And in the meantime, if you are shooting by yourself, well, you're over there and your client's over there. But can you imagine, you, you've got your camera and, and you're just like, you're rocking it out. You, you're shooting and they're going, hey, honey, I think you need a little bit less light. And I, I think you probably need a, a bit more. And uh, I, I think actually what you could do with is you could do a little bit of daylight going on here and there. And I've got control. And um, you imagine shooting an event. Uh, what we would do is we would stick these lights in the corners of our venue and location and then I would use this app to be able to control when the lights are on and off or to control the power or to control the colour or from a mobile phone or also from an iPad if you are using the uh, digital uh, director. Um, the digital director app is great because it has the same capability of being able to um, control lights but also because a digital director isn't just an app it's actually some really hardcore hardware um, with a processor inside it means that what you do is when you connect a camera in live view to this iPad through the digital director I can see what the camera sees and I can also control the camera settings as well through the, you know, that transmits through the cable. Uh, I work tethered. So sometimes you may want to get a camera into a very, very unusual position. You get your camera into an unusual position, maybe using um, a magic arm um, with a super clamp. And then once again, you cannot control your camera this time. So you imagine this, digital director. You sit down, you get your camera in a position that's awkward for you to operate the camera because it's too high up or it's too low down or it's somewhere that's dangerous and you don't want to get eaten by the, that bear that you're recording. And, and then you've got the scene lit, but you don't want to touch the light because it's inside the bear enclosure, right? So what you do is you sit there and then you control the camera and then you control the lights and you literally mastermind your scene by taking control of your devices using the digital director. Um, so that, as a device and a piece of technology, can be extremely useful for creating content. Um, but the lights themselves, um, I really enjoy these lights because they have a real punch to them. Um, they can also be controlled via um, the, the, the knobs on the side. Um, so I can change. At the moment, I don't have any control because I'm connected through the app, but believe me, you have uh, controls on the side here, which allow me to change the white balance and also the brightness. But the quality of light that comes out is very good. And that's because we have got, uh, let's get the right light, this one. That's because we've essentially got really high quality kind of bulbs in here. They're, they're, uh, the LED lights on the inside are great. Also the lenses that are um, within this panel are also very good. There's a specific type of light that comes out of this. It's, um, it's because it's quite a small light source, it's very powerful, it's very, very punchy, and it's got a very, very good throw to it. Um, I'll try and see if I can illustrate it uh, here. All right, now we're in a, an environment that is, right, so there, you can just see probably on the, on the equipment there, I'm able to really start to shape and control the light um, because it's lightweight, but also because naturally, I'm in control of the way it looks. And we're in a bright environment right now. Um, we tend to use these a lot more in low key environments. Um, uh, we use these in Africa. Uh, you're in behind the camera. You'll remember when we shot inside the, uh, it wasn't the elder, it was like the, the head lady in the village. 
Um, and we, we put these lights up inside her room. And in that village, the village had no lights. So when she saw her room at night, well, she was amazed because uh, she was seeing her room at a time of day and lit in a way that she had never seen before. It was really quite moving. And the thing that she asked us for was actually the light. She said, can I have a gift? Uh, and because they expect aid generally over there. And the thing that she wanted, unfortunately, that I couldn't give her, was she wanted my lights for a manfrotto. Um, so, you know, that was a very moving thing that made you realize the importance of portable light because we were able to capture the shot um, and we were able to make it happen because we were in a position to roll like this. And these are battery operated using, just so you know, they're using Sony F-mount batteries. Awesome. Uh, some of you are probably going to type in and wonder what these are. These are great little kind of, um, I think they're called pixie um, tripods. They're like very small um, stands that could be used for lights, uh, can be used for other devices as well. Uh, I have a lighter, no, a heavier, larger version. It's very, very lightweight. So this is in my bag all of the time. Yes, it's heavier than, than this little baby. But what I love about this one is it allows me to shoot portraits uh, and also extend the legs and also change the spread as well of the legs. Um, and you'll notice as well that we've got this wicked kind of uh, twist grip here. Um, and this is a clamp for a mobile phone. So with this cool twist grip, twisty grip, um, I clamp my mobile phone in there. And for those of you following me on Facebook Live, uh, also follow me under Simeon Quarry on Periscope, uh, will know that this device can be extremely useful. So I've got mobile phone there, uh, live content streaming, and I've got my camera in the correct orientation, which with all the chat content tends to be in portrait mode, right? So um, Manfrotto is literally supporting my work with photo, uh, video, allowing me to do it creatively and also light it with the, all of the options and different equipment we've got. Sliders, for example. Um, then the ability to get lights um, and equipment gripped in places that would normally be very, very difficult um, to place your equipment. Uh, magic arms, for those of you that kind of enjoy that type of thing. Um, you get stuck in a location where you do not have a light stand or you need to get a light mounted in a really unusual spot. Well, a super clamp with a magic arm like this might be just the thing you need. And I tend to carry uh, a couple of these in my bags everywhere that I go. Uh, so you can see this. This is a super clamp that's got like a vice-like activity. I'm going to move closer for you, Jordan. There we go. So that's the super clamp. Simply wind it up and the, this grip then, then tightens on the object, whether it be circular or more of an angular nature. That tightens on well. And then what we've got is we've got a magic arm. And there are a couple of types of magic arm. Mine is beautifully colored green just because sometimes this is sticking out in unusual places from the last shoot. So we wrapped it up with some green tape on there. But this has got a very quick um, release and it becomes fluid um, and then lock. And then all of a sudden, this is not going anywhere. Ugh, that's it, that's rigid. Right? That is not going anywhere. So um, this can be great for supporting anything from lights like this all the way through to your uh, actual cameras. This will hold a camera without a problem. But the, the cool thing about some of this equipment is that it's modular. So if I was to take off, mm -hmm, and I'm gonna release this super clamp if I can. There we go. Oh, I'm gonna put it up here. There we go. This is a super clamp. Um, I can. I put in a magic arm, fantastic. Um, then I've got um, a bendy arm, Manfrotto. I do not know what you call this. I cannot remember. Um, I'm sure someone's gonna leave it somewhere in the comments, but this is a different type of arm. It fits in here exactly the same way, it slots straight in, but this time I can bend and shape and mold the position of the object that's supported. Yeah, nice. Or if you want, for my final trick, 
um, just a very, very strong bar um, I use on the Magic Clamp, one of these. I'm sure there are loads of other uses for this. You know, I, I hang things off this. So sometimes I'm on, I'm on set um, and we need to hang all sorts of heavy objects. I would literally clamp this on, probably in a much quicker manner than I am right now, because what I'm actually going to do, do it correctly. Hook this on. It's not, sorry. You just get that back out again. That's in, engaged. It's also got a safety lock on there as well. So if this does come loose, it's not going to come out. Uh, and I can stick the heaviest of items on there. Nice, supported, uh, and I've also got other options here, other things that I could now, if I wanted to, join into. The, uh, it all builds together. I'm hot, I'm sweaty, right? It, it's crazy as we go through all of this equipment and I just kind of give you an idea of the supporting equipment that helps me to tell a story uh, and, and also helps us do so as a team. I tend to invest, as many of you know, in platforms. So I look for um, a system and what I like with the Manfrotto kit is I've got like a base plate and my base plate that I use from Manfrotto that I keep in one of these bags, um, this base plate fits on almost all, well it does, it fits on all my tripods. Right. Uh, so I can take this from my monopod that Jordan, you're using now as the monopod through to my tripods, um, through to my heads on top of my sliders, uh, and I can have multiple cameras, multiple team members locking in and out of all of the equipment that we've got. Uh, it's a very holistic solution, one that I thoroughly enjoy using. The only piece of equipment that I've not been able to show you is a monopod because Jordan is using it. Jordan, let me very quickly take the monopod off that camera whilst you're recording and we make it happen. Okay, I'm loosening. Have you got it? So I leave you now with one of my other favorite bits of important equipment. Um, I don't think that's mine, Jordan. I think that's Toby's. Uh, but this is a lovely monopod, which is great for photography and also video. This head is definitely designed for video. Um, it allows me to capture and to record smooth content while rocking the camera back and forth to get the composition and frame I'm using or to pan and to tilt. Um, and the thing that's key and important here is with this video monopod, it's got feet and these feet rotate so the rotation doesn't happen on the head the rotation happens on the feet so that there's no friction if I did not have that rotating kind of foot or plate on the bottom as I panned you get this you get this juddering that would trans transcend kind of up the, the the monopod and into the camera and into the shot um, this doesn't do that it, it's got a, a a great head that allows me to pan and tilt, but also with the feet that is all important when you're working in, in video. And then naturally, I would also use this exact same system with photography. If I wanted to shoot with a very, very slow shutter speed, I'm up and running and I'm good to go and able to hold my camera still and get the content that I want to record. It's Simeon Quarry from Vavida, photographer, cinematographer. Thank you for hanging out with me uh, as we uh, take and make our way through all of this equipment. Um, thank you to Manfrotto, thank you to Calumet with this particular episode. If you would like to uh, follow along and find out more about some of my activities and more insights into filmmaking and into photography, please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel, creatively named Simeon Quarry. Out.